What's going on, everybody? Just got back in from the Newburgh, Indiana card show. Really, really good one. I'll have a video out that. Uh, I don't know, maybe Monday. All right, guys. So I got hit while I was at the show a lot. Uh, I guess there is a breaker out there who looks to be either scamming his customer or he is just clueless. What do you guys think? I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys decide what you guys think. Is he gonna be labeled scammer or just clueless in the hobby so i want to cut real quick well actually let me talk about this first i'm gonna pull this up then we'll cut to the video and then i'll come back and i want to point out some stuff to you guys boom this is from our sports card scammer tracker provided by facebook so it says last night i was at a player break with card fans and there's his ebay id I had Wander Franco in a break in the Ultra SP. Now we got not just SP, SSP, Triple SP. We have Ultra SPs. Another variation. Good job, Tops. That's me clapping very lightly because I don't know how loud it will sound in the mic. All right. So the breaker is claiming it is a mascot card and not to Wander Franco, uh, even though it's clearly numbered blah, 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 same card. You know, it's number 215. You look at the bottom back, you find a little serial number, and it tells you it's an Ultra SP, all right? The breaker said he is trying, he sent an email to Beckett and Tops to get answers, but it's going to the house because it's a mascot card. I can understand that if you're a breaker, and you don't know what it is, you're like, hey man, you guys give me a while, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i post another video up, but I need to look into this. I see what you guys are saying, I just want to double check, because there's no mascot cards. And this is what's wrong, is whenever you start doing player breaks and buy the card breaks and all this stuff, the whole checklist is never pushed out at once. That's why I always like team breaks, because guess what, if you'd bought Tampa Bay here, you'd got this card no matter what, whether it was Wander Franco or not. But each to their own, how they do their breaks, Say, hey, You know, I'm no longer a breaker, so whatever it may be. But, let's see here. I guess this guy's been around for a while as a breaker. All right, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i clip through a lot of this stuff that's talked about after this, but I'm going to cut it here for the video. It's real quick. Uh, if you want to watch the full video, it's like an hour and 40 minutes or something on their channel on YouTube. All right, guys, I'll be right back. Well, I don't know what this is. So I'm going to guess that that is a really, 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 really hard card. Or maybe it's not. Oh, I guess I've just never have seen that. So it is a base card. Yeah, it's. No. Yeah, I would. I'm gonna guess that that is a. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, guys, we're back. So you guys might have seen the video already uh, with Sports Card Radio. They did a very good video onto it uh, earlier today. So I'm going to hit some of the key points onto it. If you guys see me flip through a screen too quick and you're trying to read the post, just hit pause onto it. So I just don't want to make this into a super long video if you already seen their video. I just want to hit some other key points onto this that really irks me to no end. Because most of you know I was a breaker back in the day and there's a lot of stuff that's wrong with this. One, saying the breaks go in the house, you know, and stuff like that there without saying, hey, I'm going to take some time and look into the matter. I'm going to send an email to Tops and try to figure this out. I want to make sure what I'm reading is correct. You know, stuff like that there. So, what I'm going to do... I'm 
pull this one down. Oh, it's over here. That's why. This one. All right. We're going to look at some pictures. So I wanted to block out the poster's name on this. Hopefully I did this time. <laughs> so there's the card right there. There's the back of it. You blow it up, you can see the little USP of the SSP of the SP of the base card variation thing. Wow, so many variations anymore. It's insane. This is where he went on to Beckett to find some answers on to. And this is the gentleman who is the scammy, the guy that bought into the break type deal. Shows the ultra variations in an 867. All right, we're going to flip through this. We all know Wander Franco. I think it shows it somewhere on here. I think it's 15. There it is. 215 Wander Franco card, right? So we go back. 215. Oh, he showed a Wander there. All right. Let's see here. This is the uh, tweet that the guy put out saying he pulled a monster and all this stuff. <laughs> he knows he pulled a monster. Real happy. It's a, it's going to be a, we're going to call it the mascot Raymond variation and, you know, keep it for the house because I'm a breaker and I lose thousands. I'll show you that part of the post next. If you guys want to pause on these to read through, he posted his stuff onto it. Um, all over the place now. But it's the breaker saying that Mr. Redlegs is listed as own spot. There is a Mr. Red Redlegs listed as its own spot in a break and all this other stuff. I I'm just not getting into all that. I just, I'm reading these real quick because I don't know. I don't want to overshoot where I'm looking at. And there's just so many pictures here of this stuff. It's not even funny. So this is where they start talking about here. So if spots go unsold and unpaid for, they keep them. Now this is an eBay break. So this is what I want to touch on. When I was a breaker and I did do some eBay breaks and stuff because you're trying to gain people to you know get your trust, get in your breaks constantly, fill and all that stuff. You have an option. If you say your breaks start at 9.30 Eastern, I'm just throwing it out there. I would say I'm coming on 15 minutes early for whatever reason to check to make sure everybody's coming in and stuff like that. A lot of people join. What I would do is at that time frame, because I, can't I couldn't solicit selling something outside of eBay, I would offer up to anybody who was on my stream... Uh, well, first I would offer until about 9.32-ish, like maybe two minutes after. Anybody in the break could buy the spot. Afterwards, I'd open it up for, you know, 60 seconds or something. To anybody else that was watching the stream could buy it. That way I'm not taking a loss on to it. You know, hey, somebody might be a diehard collector of that team, and it might look like a crappy team to me and to other people, but, you know, that's their team. So, if not, then I just took the team and I moved on with it. No joke, a lot of times, say like it was the Houston Astros and like, I don't know what it was, 16 or something like that. If I hit an autograph, I just gave it to somebody in the break. Whether I random it or just threw it in their package. That was just me. I wasn't keeping it, you know. If I was taking an L onto it, I took it as an L onto it. You know, you had to buy product to get product type deal. So... On to here, right here, it says, he talks about we're out a couple thousand dollars. Should that be random to the rest of the break? <laughs> if you're losing thousands on the break, you might want to think about your career as a breaker. First off, if you're starting everything at 99 cents, just like I said about the whatnot breaker, you're wrong. Start it off to where you break even and let it go from there. There's your profit afterwards. Figure out how much teams are selling for, where you're at to break even, and list them at that. Simple solution to it all. Really is. But again, he don't want advice from anybody out there because it's his business, his rules, whatever type deal, as you can see through here. But that irks me to no end. 
Because if you have a license and you have an account with GTS, Peach, or Southern, you get an allocation. If you bought after that allocation, yeah, you're probably getting maybe $10, $20, $30, maybe up to $50 cheaper a box from Blowout and Dave and Adams, depending on how it's bouncing that day and the next day. But you were getting that, hoping to break even, in order to keep that allocation and get more future allocations. That's how it works. If you're just buying directly from David Adams and Blowout, you know, you start questioning, is there a license involved? Why don't you have these other accounts and all that? And you're going to lose money if you're buying it straight off of that stuff because you have no wiggle room. The way I looked at it, if I got 10 cases of Bowman's Best in, and then I, got five, I ordered five more on release date at a different price, I balanced that all out total to where I was making a profit. I didn't look at profit off of just one case. I looked at it. At the end of me breaking 15 cases, where am I at? How much wiggle room? Okay. So I can lower this team down $5 per break. That was just the way I did it. But everybody's out there to maximize returns and all the time, gain them big profits, and they still want those allocations to grow, which is another fight in its own thing nowadays. But that just, it really made me th sit there and think about when I seen this message piece here about it. I'm like, then you're really breaking the wrong way. And you're telling the guy, if you don't like the way, the you don't like the way he breaks, go find somebody else. Well, I'm going to say, if you don't know how to be a breaker, don't be a breaker. Because this either here does make you look as one as either a scammer or it's you're clueless on how to do it all. I literally came home and it took me two minutes to find the information I needed to do. Grand, this break took, uh, what was it, maybe two days ago or something like that. I'm going to pull up this other page here as we're talking. And I think it was happened on the 16th, so like almost like 48 hours ago. I found the answer. You could simply as put out, I'm going to look into it. I want to confirm it before I go any further. I'll do a video confirming it. Hopefully, that'll settle everything on to it. I do apologize, but with all these um, extra, extra SPs that they're not putting on checklists, I just need to double confirm because this is an odd case. So this is right off of Beckett. Right there it says, Raymond on Wander Franco's body. And that's where he's going with it. Card 215, which matches up, right? So you go further into it. Oops, sorry guys. I was looking at something else on it. Let me scroll back up. Where did I... Oh, right here. Mascot Ultra Short Prints. As you can see, done by Beckett. You don't need to email Beckett. It's right here. While the SP and double SP variations don't follow a single theme, the Ultra Short Prints do. So that means those ultra short prints are following a theme based off of the original card number. Although odds were not acknowledged on any rampers, these cards are believed to be the scarce of the tiers, blah, blah, blah. All right, right here is the key part. For Series 2, mascots are used as variations for superstars. That's all you need to read right there. But you can go further. Their heads are... Are supposed to be placed onto earlier cards like Tampa Bay's Raymond on Wander Franco's body. These ultra variations also have the same card number as the player. But right here for Series 2, mascots are used as variations for superstars. To me, am I reading that wrong? Am I reading this statement? While the SP and SSP variations don't follow a theme, the ultra short prints do. That's a Wander Franco card. I mean, I'm so positive I'd put, you know, tons of paychecks on this stuff because I'm like a 99.9999% on this. Unless I'm just missing something from being tired of going to the big show, The Monster, yesterday and then, you know, getting about a couple hours of sleep and moving out to uh, Newburgh today. Tell me, am I wrong? Because to me, it's a Wonder Franco card. Pretty sure I'm right. I know Sports Card Radio probably agreed with me too uh, just from off of their video watching it. But I wanted to put this out because you guys are ones ultimately that will go out there and buy into breaks or buy cards and stuff like that there. Um, 
for me, I no longer really buy into breaks. If I do, it's with people that I've known for five, ten years, and I'm not too worried about it. And if they would make a mess up like this, they'd fix it, and really in a heartbeat, I'm never worried about it. It's people I don't know out there. Grant, some people may have been breaking with them for a long time. To me, the, the way the situation was handled, I, I would be done with them if I was their client, and I'm not. Uh, just It's just bad all around, uh, just the way it was handled across the board, because either it makes you look like a scammer, or it makes you look like you're clueless in the hobby on how to handle this stuff onto it. And that, that's another reason why I pretty much stopped breaking, besides product, the allocations, how it was working, and everything like that. It's just... There's so much stuff they're not releasing, and then you got to figure it out. And especially when you're doing player breaks, that puts it in a totally different realm than a team break. If I was unsure of it, I'd seen Tampa Bay. Eh, Tampa Bay, don't matter if it's Raymond or uh, Wander Franco. But I got why people do player breaks, because they think they can get more money out of the whole thing by doing player breaks. Um, I know other breakers we talked about, they tried, and then, you know, we, I was, we were trying to see... What was the best route of going? At least trying to break even every time. This is way back in the day before the boom type deal. Were player breaks the way to go? Was it team breaks? Was it random? Was it serial number? Was it by the... Everybody got their own box? Whatever it could be. But all right, everybody. Appreciate you guys watching this video. Again, let me know what you guys think offhand. I'm sure you guys have seen the post everywhere out there by now. The other videos out there. I just wanted to get something out with some of my thoughts and opinion on to it. And I, like I said, it took me two minutes to find this. Now, granted, it could have been just updated since he broke. But I haven't seen anything else when I scrolled through the comments. There's like over 400, so maybe I missed it. It's probably up to 500 now on that Facebook group. But hopefully he ends up getting the card. Everything gets squared away for the buyer of the Wander Franco spot. Uh... Just some different variations. I mean, there there's a lot of point fingers and stuff like that that will go about this. But in the end, it should just go the guy had to wander Franco. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good one.